Hey everybody, it's Jay Glazer, and you know what time of week, of day, of year it is. It's Guidance by Glazer time, baby, and we are back with a big ol' episode 4-0. Episode 40, I can't believe we are still cranking these out, but hopefully you're this, please give me a like or a thumbs up. Hey, if you hate my comments and, my, and, and, and what I'm talking about, give me a thumbs down. We'll take any form of thumb you're willing to share, but hopefully you give us a thumbs up or a heart a little kiki dance video moment there you know what i'm talking about but we are back with episode 40 and today we are talking about how to spot the deal let's play a game it's called how to spot the deal everybody how to spot the deal obviously i'm very excited about this topic because i think it's incredibly important in today's climate and marketplace why because we are in an opportunity marketplace there are a lot of great purchases out there that people are claiming and getting their hands on and we want you as our loyal following to also be in position to do so and how do you do those things how do you accomplish a great purchase how do you spot the deal guess what that's why i'm here i'm going to tell you right now the first thing you want to look for when you are trying to find a deal and this doesn't necessarily specifically pertain to uh the buyer's market that we're in. In fact, this is universally true. And one that I stole from a friend of mine who's a trader um, in the stock market, and he trades on what's called arbitrage. So if you are a real estate investor or looking to find the deal, trade on arbitrage. Now, what the heck does that mean? Let's talk about it. What that means in trading terms is trade on a an event that changes the index, changes the you know, puts a, puts a blip on the radar, so to speak. So in New York City real estate terms, that means find something that is a moment, uh, a moment in time, a specific opportunity in time that's causing a disruption, the arbitrage, uh, in the marketplace. So a few examples of that that you will immediately understand are the L train shutdown in Williamsburg. That is a very specific infrastructure change that is happening imminently that is causing a certain level of uncertainty in the Williamsburg marketplace, which is going to create opportunities for buyers because sellers want to get out because they don't know what's going to happen when the L actually shuts down. That could mean an owner who actually uses the L and is like, hell no, I don't want to have to take a bus into New York City. Or it could be an investor who's like, hell no, I don't want to take the risk of knowing what it's like after the L actually shuts down and how bad it could possibly get. So there's a level and degree of uncertainty in Williamsburg right now and there's a moment to trade on that arbitrage. Another great example that is now behind us, but I thought was really opportunistic back in the day, was when the um, the Second Avenue subway line was being built along the Upper East Side Second Avenue corridor. It was a mess there. The apartments were dusty. There was a drill going off every 10 minutes. There were like crazy, crazy noises, and people were like, whoa, this is totally not for me. But in reality, is if you could stomach if you could weather that storm of that construction, you got yourself an amazing purchase if you were along that Second Avenue corridor. Uh, last week I spoke about opportunity zones. That's causing a whole change and disruption in the marketplace, creating new funds, creating new opportunities. That's a specific moment, that's arbitrage. So if you're a buyer looking to spot the deal, identify specific instances, specific moments in time that allow you to get perhaps a better deal than you would have otherwise. Another important tip, moving on, is to always get granular when you're trying to spot the deal. I think one of my biggest pet peeves in this industry is the massive generalization that we do of marketplaces. Well, how's the market? Well, what market? There are 250 markets in New York City. We're talking about Long Island City, which has a different moment of arbitrage with, with Amazon, or are we talking about Brooklyn Heights? Are we talking about the Upper West Side? Are we talking about Riverside Park on the Upper West Side or Central Park on the Upper West Side? Even within specific neighborhoods, there's different marketplaces. So get super 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 get super granular don't focus on neighborhoods or these market trends these these massive market reports that everybody's sending you they mean nothing find the sellers that have to sell in this marketplace right that's how you get granular find the seller in the mar in the area you want to live in that has to sell motivation is everything when finding the deal right 
you want to check the sales history. If someone's been on the market for a year and they've dropped the price three times, that person is A, committed to selling, B, probably pretty motivated because they haven't sold yet, and C, they've already discounted the price, so clearly that person wants to get to the finish line. So f check the sales history. Check how many brokers they've gone through. You know, not trying to uh, defend our turf here, but brokers are typically the first person to get blamed and the first person to get fired, and then a new broker gets hired. That pain point of, I've gone through this, this broker, this broker st stinks, that broker stinks, I need to find the right one. They've been through enough pain where at some point they just throw up the white flag and they say, forget it, I'm just emotionally exhausted and ready to sell. That is getting granular with a specific apartment and a specific owner in a specific instance. And it's not just saying, oh, well, the Upper West Side is a great place to buy. There might be amazing deals on, in certain pockets of the Upper West Side, but there also might be sellers who just aren't realistic or aren't ready to sell or sellers who happen to get lucky and sell their home for a really crazy out of market price. So you have to understand that it's not just about generalizing the marketplace. It's about getting really super, super, super hyper-focused on the specific property that you might be interested in seeing if there's a deal in play on that property. Another way to find, spot the deal, spot it, do you spot it? I've spotted a few, let's talk. Here we are, we're talking. So, setting a higher price, what does that mean? That means if you are considering buying in a new construction condominium, you know, the last four or five years, as you've heard me talk about a lot, have brought a ton of new construction condominiums to the marketplace. So many investors uh, were guided into these purchases circa 2013, 14, 15, into these mega developments to, oh, it's gonna be a great investment, the market's gonna continue to appreciate. You know, they, they bought these as investment properties or they bought them to live in for a short period of time or they just bought them to live in but ultimately paid a crazy premium. So you're seeing all of these very, very high prices close in buildings and then specific instances of sellers who uh, thought they were gonna flip but aren't or decided that uh, they didn't have uh, the resources that they, um, the resources to, to keep the property, so they're selling, meaning you know they thought they would be able to make a quick profit, and then realizing they can't, they don't have the resources to continue to hold the property and weather the storm. So there's a lot of sales that are happening at a far lower price than the comps that have been set in the building. Now, that doesn't mean if you buy something uh, for 25% less than the same apartment above that you're gonna be able to flip it, but what it means is if you hold onto it long enough and you weather the storm of the current down cycle, when all the prices start rebounding, you're essentially at a much lower cost basis than someone who paid 20% higher than you. But that 20% higher comp will be the new basis when the market rebounds. So you'll be in for a lower level and a lower dollar amount. So essentially you're buying something potentially 80, 80 cents on the dollar, let's say. So you want to look in a building where you'll have a higher comp set for when the building and the market rebounds because you'll just be all the more the victor for having not bought pre-construction or during the time it was being built and you bought after the market already settled and realized it wasn't continuing to appreciate and you'll, you'll be the beneficiary of that. You'll be the, the person who is the late adopter but ultimately late adopting was the right way to go. And lastly, something I talk about so much in my videos, something I think is super, super important um, is always identify unique properties, right? Unique properties will sell in any market. Now, of course, they're gonna be influenced by market conditions. Nothing is um, protected and insulated from market conditions. The market is always smarter than we are. I've said that many, many times as well. But find something that you can't find anywhere else, right? So long as it's unique, uh, so long as it's unique but not beyond comprehension, right? There's something that might be unique that it's like such a bizarre and unusual and you can't wrap your head around the floor plan or you don't understand why the kitchen is there or why, you know, there's, for example, there's a lot of uh, properties you can buy in, in converted churches. I personally think that, you know, having all of those um, stained glass windows outside your building and, and as part of your windows is a little too unique. It's a, it's a, it's a little off-putting for certain people. So don't buy something that's too unique, but when you find something that's special, unique and special, that's always going to be a potential deal because when the market gets back to normal and everybody's looking at all of these cookie cutter apartments, they might see yours as something they can't find anywhere else. And if you look about, if you think about scarcity and inventory, if there's a scarcity of what you have, you will always have a marketplace. And that is how, my friends, you play spot the deal. 
if you uh, aren't subscribed to our newsletter, you are missing all of our deals. We send out a deal of the week that I have hand selected. It was actually the motivation and inspiration for this video. Deals that we are hand selecting and sending out to our database. So drop your information in the comments and we'll happily add you. You don't even have to do anything. You just send us your information, we add you, and you will get our deals every week. And if something piques your interest, you can reach out and we'll give you all the details on that. These are properties that we feel uh, check off one or more of the boxes that I've just outlined for you. Uh, a few properties, for example, I have my list here that we featured. We featured a townhouse in Tribeca that was incredibly unique by our by our uh, eyes, in our eyes, and so we sent that to people. We also featured one of these condominiums that the owner is trying to get rid of, uh, but the building comps are really high. That was on Clinton Street. If you want information about that property, I just looked uh, a little while ago, there's still opportunities in that building. So we also sent out a deal in Williamsburg. So we are practicing what we are preaching, friends. We are bringing opportunities to our database and our clients and we want to bring those to you so so send us your information you can always find us on instagram at the glazer team facebook which is glazer team and then our website glazerteam.com so find us in any one of those mediums and we'll happily give you some of these delicious delicious morsels uh and deal nuggets as always thank you for watching and we will see you next week on another episode of guidance by glazer take care